still uh, plus TV Africa and of course it's time for Off the Press, a period where we uh, look through some of the major stories making headlines across the country and uh, get to share thoughts you know, with you. Our guest uh, this morning, Mr. Ezekiel Iyaetok, and of course he would be definitely expressing himself on some of these major stories across the country um, uh, this morning. So. Um, we're starting with, um, uh, I believe, uh, the Guardian newspapers. But first of all, let's say good morning to our guests. Morning, to, uh, sir. Good morning. Always a pleasure to be on Plus TV Africa. Thank you very much for joining us. I hope it's going to be a very interesting 30 minutes. I trust it will be. Just the networks should behave themselves. <laughs> okay. So we, we're going to kick off with the Guardian newspapers this morning and see what we can uh, quickly find over here. Um, of course, this one uh, got very popular yesterday, Uncertainty Rules for Pump Prize. Um, that's uh, the lead story on The Guardian. The NCC also orders operators to ch uh, charge banks for USSD services. Osibanjo assures Nigerians of access to coronavirus vaccine and also Clark cautions Osibanjo on Niger Delta. Also on The Guardian, Lagos government reviews 2018 Land Use Act as it waives penalties for 2017 to 2019. These are, I, I believe, very, very huge stories um, on The Guardian this morning. Um, I'm not sure which one you would want to quickly kick off with um, this morning. Um, well, I think everybody would like to start from the fuel price um, increase. I, I think, again, I've always said, I, I wish government will appreciate um, the imperatives of governance, the things that ought to do. The issue of uh, fuel pricing is one of the very unnecessary um, misunderstandings, mix-ups that we have. For instance, why is it so difficult for them to let Nigerians know how the pricing mechanism in works. For instance, there are one, two, three specifics that should be understood. We know that one, you have to buy the crude, and the crude, the price of crude is um, no, not crude this time. The refined product, the price is is um, can easily be told. Number two, when it comes in, as you mean, it comes in at five naira. What are the charges that makes it go up to eight naira? And then what are the profit margins that make it go up to 10 naira and what makes it finally come out at a pump price of 15 naira when those indices are known it becomes pretty difficult for any operator to unilaterally you know swing the prices up and down you know i've always said this the best way for you to perpetuate corruption is for you to introduce those elements of opaqueness where you really can't tell which direction anything is going. As at today, we need to know whether the, 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 the sector has been completely deregulated by way of there's no subsidy. If that be the case, Nigerians know that a businessman is out to make money, to make profit. Then PPRA has all the indices. They help us with all the necessary and, uh, permutations and uh, price indices that will help us to know what is the reasonable price range to fix for petrol. When this is done, we won't be having all this back and forth. But do you realize that PPRA had been doing that, but this past month, before they talked about this new increase, they were extremely silent, extremely silent. They didn't say a word. So now we are waking up to, oh, it's going to be 150 naira per liter. I know each time we have these jerks, it just makes people to go on wild speculation, price arbitrary price increase, and things that really don't all go well for a season like this. My simple suggestion to government is, please open up the space. Let us know what the going rates are, what the charges, what the expectations are. Now, petrol is not the only thing that is bought from abroad. How come that the prices of other things don't just fluctuate on a weekly basis. You know, there are several things that we bring in from abroad. What we need to do is give Nigerians informed knowledge, be open, be transparent, and then let us, at a time like this, try to minimize our profit margins. Let government play down on all these issues of charges, charges. 
What I've discovered, discovered, and it really gets me worked up and very uncomfortable, is that at a time like this, our government is just more interested in getting money, getting money, getting money, while other governments are giving lots of incentives, lots of sweeteners, lots of palliatives to the people. Our government is still talking of VAT, talking of tax, talking of increasing this. They're talking, they're just interested in getting money. And I ask a simple question. To what end is the getting money for? Oh, to fund their budget, to fund their priorities. Shouldn't the welfare and security of the citizen be the prime purpose of government? As stated in the Constitution clearly, Chapter 2, Section 14, Subsection 2B, it states emphatically that the security and the welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. So why is building that road for your own political end more important to the extent that a man who is already bleeding, you are sucking some more blood yeah. so that you can score your political point? We're waking up to the reality of the fact that government we'll, we'll see how at all done. levels are more interested, yes, yeah, we'll in their own. So the full form price thing just underlines the extent to which we have this opaqueness. As enlightened as you and I are, you really can't tell yeah. why the price is 150 this morning. All right, and, and now, now it also brings me to another story on the, um, on the Guardian this morning that says uh, revolution protests rock Abuja and Lagos. Police arrest and detain and also charge activists. A defiant group holds rally in Abuja once the 1999 constitution scrapped. Um, we are back to Abacha days, uh, Deja Deonju uh, uh, says. He was also on our uh, PLOS uh, politics uh, uh, program uh, yesterday evening. Um, also, um, Serap once arrest a probe. Agba Jalingo, another detainee's return, uh, re um, another detainee's released in Lagos. So now, now let's also talk about um, um, this. Um, it's definitely top two biggest stories in the country today. What are your thoughts on the yeah. protests, um, once again, for the revolution now? You, you know, this morning I was listening to my brother and friend, Femi Adeshino, on another um, station. And um, I felt really sorry for him. And um, the same goes for people in government. It's one of two things. It's either they are so removed from the system that they really don't know what is going on in Nigeria. Or they are so, um, uh, I don't know if intimidated by the system that they cannot afford the luxury of telling the truth. Now there was a certain um, army general, I don't know if it was a general, who said certain things which reflected the reality of state. I'm told that right now he's in detention. I also listened to the current, you know, uh, you know, spokesperson of the Nigerian Army yesterday, and I just can't get to, to wrap my head around how the people in government are either so unaware of happening to the system in the system, which will be a major tragedy, or they are such awesome you know, pretenders, yeah. and I wonder to what end. Why am I saying all this? Number one, if you remember sometime in 1984, our current president, General uh, Muhammad Buhari, overthrew the civilian government. And the then Senate, and what happened? People were jubilating on the streets. The then Senate president, Mr. Joe Wires, was quoted as telling a friend, I sincerely can't believe that we were this unpopular. You know, and that's where I really want to take the statement from. The man who was the Senate president had no idea of how unpopular their government had become. You know, so to that extent, I am worried how those of us are friends of government really don't communicate to the man in power. Let me tell you something. Some, some days back, I called up one of your staff. This is a confession on air. I called up one of your staff and said, 
I want to know what your staff think of my presentations. What are the areas that they think maybe I am um, not doing very well and what are the areas they think I'm doing well? So I could yeah. like, um, you know, and, and I, I, before I asked the person, I said, make me a promise. And the person said, I said, promise me to tell them the honest truth. Don't try to be nice, just put it raw and straightforward. And I extracted the promise. Then I asked the question, this question. And the feedback I got, largely complimentary, but there were certain areas. For instance, I'm not as, you know, um, what's the word, militant, as I appear sometimes out of passion, you know, because you kind of let yeah. passion overdrive. You're talking to people who want to listen to you as an intelligent person and get an informed opinion. Now, what I'm doing now is as a result of a feedback mechanism that yeah. I got. All right. Let, now, let's, if let, you let's... try... Let, let's let's um, let's um, um, of course we, we totally appreciate your uh, contributions at every time. Um, we we need to move to yeah. the Daily Sun and see what we can quickly find over there, um, and of course get to also share with um, our um, viewers this morning um, as quickly as possible. Of course, I'm sure that we're still going to be talking about uh, the revolution now protests. Um, it rocks Abuja, Lagos, Akure, and Oshobo. Police arrest Jalingo and scores. Of course, um, show array escapes. That's how the Daily Sun puts it. COVID-19, PTF reports governors to Buhari, says they are not enforcing protocols, uh, or rather says not enforcing protocols are challenging. Um, also on the Daily Sun uh, this uh, morning, uh, of course, still more protests on the um, pictures of the protest. Nigerians question minister over federal government's claim of spending 523 million naira on school feeding. I think we should kick off with that first, um, um, Ezekiel, um, this morning. Yeah. You know, you know uh, let me just land my thought on the previous, which dovetails into this issue of protest. The people in government must learn to get a feedback on what's happening because what happened yesterday, the protest, and my friend Femi Adeshina said they were just irritants, a handful of people. It's a major misstep in governance because things are going to get worse. As things get more difficult, if there's going to be another protest, people are going to say, oh, when a few people were on the street, Adeshina said they were irritants. Let's now all move in. Yeah. And that's not good for government at a time like this because of the COVID-19 and the rest. But coming back to the school feeding that you talked about, it's curious. And I really want the National Assembly to tell us how you could have spent that amount of money during the lockdown. It's curious. And we shouldn't just let these things, you know, slip through the cracks and leave it there because it emboldens others to do worse things in future. So I really think that they should look into it. Then when you talk in terms of, um, okay, let's let's leave that in case you want to take another picture. Yeah, there, there's also another story here that I'm seeing on the Daily Sun. It's actually very shocking, and I believe we, a, lot, a lot of people must have seen this yesterday about um, Al-Qaeda and ISIS infiltrating other parts of Nigeria. It says uh, Al-Qaeda infiltrating Northwest, the U.S. warns. Um, is, that, is that something that you put fear in a lot of Nigerians across the country? I, I, I think it's something that if you look at what happened in Syria. Okay, uh, we seem to have um, uh, lost um, our guest there. But of course, as we try to reconnect um, all the stories um, still on the uh, Daily Sun this morning, and I believe it's one thing that we must talk about, um, Al-Qaeda infiltrating Northwest, uh, the U.S. warns. It says also we won't allow another Boko Haram in a region. Um, uh, um, uh, of course, uh, Masari assures. Edo Speaker accuses Imo Governor and APC of plotting to import fake mace and take over assembly. All right, uh, of course, um, other stories that we're still looking at on the Daily Sun this uh, morning. Edo Speaker, of course, accusing the Imo State Governor and the APC of plotting to import a fake mace and take over assembly. Also, halt killings in southern Kaduna now. Utomi and General Omahi, others charge the federal government and El Rufai. 
Police, uh, of course, the pictures are on the Daily Sun. Police dispersing, protesting members of the group, um, uh, Revolution Now group yesterday in, uh, of course, places across Nigeria. Um, uh, major marketers consider 150 or 151 naira per litre as labor, JF and Kakol kick. Nigeria heading for full deregulation, says Moman. And of course, uh, that's with reference to the fall price increase, you know, that has once again become a major story in our news. If we can reconnect with um, our guest, of course, we will um, continue with the analysis. Welcome back. Thank you. Good to be back. So I was saying, I hope I'm clear now. Yes, you are. Go ahead. Great. If you notice what happened in Syria and that axis right down to North Africa, the Arab Spring, and these guys being constantly moved out. The, the, the intel from the U.S. says that these guys are moving down. And right back home, you can you remember when um, just some days ago, when Boko Haram had dealt with our army, unfortunately, they now say that they have a territory in Niger State, I believe. And just some days back, the, the governor of Katsina State told Mr. President that or said that about nine local governments, almost one third the state was not directly under his control. Now, when you hear these narratives, I think it's not good enough for Mr. President to order the, the army or the security chiefs to, to reject their architecture. No, this is a time to lead from the front. Yeah. We can no longer you know, go by these lines that we are doing. This is a time for him to bring new narratives, new blood, new thinking, new paradigms, new perspectives into our fight against these insurgents. Well, let, let's see if and he, if he eventually will be done. able to. Um, um, it's, it's, a, it's a, I believe it's a call that, you know, a lot of Nigerians have, you know, been making, including yourself, uh, multiple times. Um, we, we're going to move on to the punch newspapers now. Uh, we're really working with time. High debt profiles stop borrowing, tackle mass killings. Revolution now tells uh, President Buhari. Also, Nigerians spent 2.37 trillion naira on petrol in 13 months, says the NNPC. Defense headquarters silence, uh, silent rather as the U.S. says ISWAP and Al Qaeda taking over West Africa. Marginalization, Yakasai backs return to parliamentary system. And also reps Soman Amechi, Ahmed, uh, DMO, DG and others over Chinese loans. So I, um, I, I think we've already spoken um, a, a little bit on the revolution. So let's just quickly speak on um, the, uh, of course, um, Chinese loans and a few other things this morning. The Chinese loans. Yeah, but, but before that, yes. uh, other the stories. Chi female soldier raped by bandits appeals dismissal. A septuagenarian guard dies after attack by Lagos driver. And also on uh, the Beirut explosion, I thought I'll die, says a Nigerian footballer. Um, one last story. Or your vows to recover 96 billion naira stolen under Ajimobi. Um, and lastly, Ohaneze and IPOB fight the same cause with different approaches, says Wodo. So go ahead. Let, let's have your thoughts on as, uh, as much. Yeah, as on, on the, let's start with the Chinese, the Chinese law. Yeah. There are certain fundamentals that you cannot run away from. A man who gives you money, he's not giving you the money because he likes you. He's trying to do business. So he's going to do everything to protect his end. I've gone to the bank to borrow money on several occasions. So the man who is giving you money, the banker, wants to extract as much as he wants. And you want to protect yourself as much as you want, but you need his money. So you've got to know that that guy is not a nice guy. He's a businessman. So when you go to a place like China, those guys are sharp, smart, extremely. So when they are negotiating with you, they are looking at your weak points. They are looking at their exit strategy. They are looking at all this. Now, you want to let them know that, number one, you need their money. And number two, you are responsible enough to repay them. Now, when you sit down, you also look at the terms and conditions where you will not be willing to agree with. You know, a man is bothered about your repayment. He knows that you don't have a history of you know, keeping to you know, agreement. So the question is, how do I secure myself? He tells you, OK, if you default, why don't I go after the investment I made? No. They want to go after any of your national assets. Now, that rings a bell. If you are to go after your investment, you will make sure that that investment you made will be worth the while for you to take back. 
But if you have to go after other na national in, 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 uh, uh, assets, it means that you can personally subvert, you know, in a very smart way, your repayment so that you can get the ultimate price that you wanted, which is the other national asset. This is just common sense. Now, there are a lot of Chinese in this country, in every nook and cranny of this country. They know how to play the game. They understand us like the back of their palms. So it is very risky. I think the time has come when not just the National Assembly, but every Nigerian should realize that we are the stakeholders and we elected these people to manage our resources. And we've got to ask ourselves the simple question, do they have our interests at heart and the capacity? All right. And revolution for me is just a stopgap. It's not the real thing. The real thing is for us to wake up as a country Think of the next leadership recruitment. Start now. That's why I appreciate a body like the National Consultative uh, Front. Start now to set parameters and paradigms for leadership recruitment so that the next set of people that come in, three years will not kill us. We'll be able to have people who understand government, governance, they are in for service and we are better off right. at the end of the day. All right. I also want us to look at um, the Ohanez and the IPOB. Um, of course, uh, statements made by the... Uh, uh, Chief John Nyawodo um, a few days ago, I believe, with regards to Haneza and the IPOB, saying that they um, are fighting the same cause, you know, with different approaches. Uh, let's quickly have your thoughts on that. Now, that's, that's simply, I mean, that's the simplest way you can tell the truth. IPOB says we want the good of the people of the Southeast. Or Haneza said they want the good of the people of the Southeast, but they are using two different approaches. And we Nigerians, we are also saying we need the good of the people of the Southeast because if we are a federation, it means that every federating unit is important. I feel for the Amargeries. I'm from the South South. I feel for the Amargeries. I feel for the youth of Northern Nigeria. I think what's being done is not okay. I think there must be a change. There must be a complete so that the youth of the Nile of the Northeast are the better for it. Northern Nigeria generally. I also believe that the Southeast is a vital part of this country. What's good for the goose is good for the, for the sauce or the gander. So we must be careful to carry everybody along. So uh, to that extent, what they are fighting for, the good of the people of, Niger, uh, of, the, of the Southeast is what both Hanese and IPOP are fighting for. And there must be a third leg. Every well-meaning Nigerian should also join in and fight for the good of the people of the Southeast. If anything, goes, you know, the, the, the Biafran war, I'm from the South South, like I said, and I was probably around um, seven, I trekked from Ikoyedekpene to your trek. At that age, my feet were swollen. So what affects one is going to affect all, especially the global village that we're now operating. Yeah. I think that right. we should not, we should go beyond IPOP or the South Sam Ohaneze, every well-meaning Nigerians must join to lend a voice and say, the Southeast is a major component of this country. One of the six geopolitical zones, one of the three major tribes, they cannot yeah. be treated as if we are inviting them to, to do them some favor. They are stakeholders and must be treated as such. All right. Thank you so much. I, I, I want us to quickly just look through, um, of course, uh, the stories on the nation uh, the, before we say goodbye this morning. Um, uh, PTF states not enforcing COVID-19 protocols and also pilots issued two-week strike notice. Uh, union angry over SAC. Also, Lagos reviews land use charge rates. Uh, the Beirut blast death toll reaches 135. And of course, uh, Zulum governors await Buhari's response on attack. Also, Agba Koban uh, Quakers uh, differ on China loan and sovereignty clause. On the Edo State and Ondo 2020, seven pro Basiki lawmakers removed deputy speaker. Governor redeploys director of protocol over Kola Not. And also, Akira Duluan Unity Forum reach consensus. We are totally out of time this morning. We would like to say a huge thank you to yes. um, um, our guest, Ezekiel Nyai Talk, for your thoughts and, of course, for sharing your ideas with us uh, this morning. We we'll would look forward to speaking with you again. Thank you. And that's all the time that we have uh, for Off the Press this morning. It's our um, daily review on stories making headlines across the country. Stay with us. Of course, at the top of the hour, we have our uh, news on the hour coming your way. I am Osaogi Ogbonwa.